Too much rain, not enough rain. Growing populations, changing human behaviours, sensitive environments and the health of Tasmanians. These are just some of the many challenges that Taswater faces from day to day while they deliver water and sewage services to Tasmanians. So how do you meet those challenges? A big part of it is engineering. Come and meet some of the clever people solving problems with engineering so they can deliver for customers every day. Engineers love numbers. You can't argue with data, and Taswater has lots of numbers. But let's put them into a Tasmanian context. Although Tasmania has just over 2% of Australia's population, Taswater operates about 35% of the water treatment plants and sewage treatment plants in Australia. Now let's look at drinking water and what it takes to service almost 215,000 connections from 61 drinking water systems, or one connection for every 2.5 Tasmanians. Just the water mains in Tasmania alone, the big pipes that take large amounts of water over long distances, are 6,459 kilometres in total length. Now, the drive between Taswater's most geographically distant water treatment plants, Smithton to Dover, is around 490 kilometres. So if you laid all of Taswater's drinking water mains end to end, you'd go from Smithton to Dover and back over six and a half times. And that doesn't include the thousands and thousands of kilometres of reticulated water pipes in our streets. Taswater captures, stores, treats and transports approximately 179 million litres of treated drinking water for customers every day. If you put that amount of water in one litre milk cartons and put them side by side, they'd stretch over 11,340 kilometres. They would circumnavigate the Tasmanian coastline 4.1 times. Remember, that's just one day's worth of water. When it comes to sewage, there are 186,958 connections in the state, or one connection per 2.9 Tasmanians. There are 4,837 kilometres of sewage mains, or 5.8 return trips from St Helens to Strawn, that transport our waste to 110 sewage treatment plants. More than 52 billion litres of sewage are treated by Taswater each year. Let's break that down a bit. Get it? Breakdown? Sewage treatment? Anyway, that would be nearly 142 million litres per day and fill an average-sized public swimming pool about 114 times per day. Those are some big numbers. Let's follow a droplet of water over hundreds of kilometres, making its way from pristine wilderness in Tasmania's Derwent Valley, north of Hobart, and ending up recycled as irrigation water in the fertile Coal Valley east of Hobart. It goes through bulk pipelines, reservoirs, the Hobart reticulation network, into homes, down the drain or toilet, into a sewage treatment plant, and back into a recycled water pipeline, taking it to an irrigation dam and through another pipeline to irrigators. It's a lesson in clever engineering, forward thinking and caring for our environment. So we're at Lake Fenton, which is located in Mount Field National Park, which is approximately 120 kilometres from Hobart. The lake is a 4.5 gig capacity. It's 1,015 metres above sea level and it supplies 20 megalitres a day to the supply system of Hobart, which equates to about 20% of the annual water supply. The catchment is a natural runoff, approximately size of about 800 hectares of catchment area. The Lake Fenton pipeline can deliver 20 megalitres of water a day to Hobart. After all that water is used up in that supply system, surplus water then runs off into the waterworks reserve at uh, South Hobart. So we're at the Lake Fenton National Park dosing station and the water here is fluoridated and chlorinated for disinfection in the treatment plant. Uh, feeds the uh, National Park Township. The water then continues on down the bulk water main to another offtake which feeds uh, Fentonbury and Westerway and then on to another treatment plant which is Bushy Park. Then down to New Norfolk, uh, goes through Box Hill Reservoir. We're at uh, Elliott Road Reservoir in Gnorky. So the water has left Box Hill Fenton. It's come through Granton. Uh, to Chigwell Reservoir through to Elliott Road Reservoir and then it goes on to three other reservoirs and on to the Waterworks Reserve. Uh, we're at Lower Reservoir which is part of the Waterworks system. Lower Reservoir is uh, where the Fenton surplus water ends up 
from Lake Fenton after replenishing all the reservoirs and water treatment plants and offtakes. The uh, surplus water goes into the dam in conjunction with mountain water and then goes out another major pipeline to feed the uh, Sandy Bay low level zone all the way down to Taruna. And also from here we can put water into the city and over the Tasman Bridge to Clarence. On the occasions when this water makes its way into homes on the eastern shore of Hobart, it will eventually go down the drains and toilets and onto sewage treatment plants in Rosny and Rokeby. Both of these plants create nutrient-rich water that is ideal for irrigating. Tasmania's largest recycled water scheme is the Clarence Recycled Water Scheme and it's located in the Coal River Valley. It incorporates the Rosny, Rokeby, Richmond and Cambridge STPs. To protect the environment and public health, we regularly monitor recycled water supplied to our customers to ensure that it meets the specification of Class B recycled water. We're fortunate enough to jump on the recycled scheme approximately 10 years ago. We saw that the price benefit in it and potentially the nutrient benefit in the water may have been useful to us. So we're now drawing in approximately 3.6 megalitres per week. That's during summer. We do taper back to about 1.8 during uh, winter. We've got a holding facility just over behind you there, which is about 10 meg. So that does allow us for if there is any interruption in flow or in supply, Getting a look inside a sewer is fascinating and kind of disgusting, particularly when you find problems caused by things that aren't meant to be there. Nappies, tissues, cotton buds, toothbrushes, paper towel and toys are just some of the things that make their way into our sewerage system that can cause damage to infrastructure and our environment. Not everything that ends up in a toilet is flushable, like wet wipes and mobile phones. Our sewerage system is designed to take away toilet paper, human waste and grey water. So remember to only flush the three P's, pee, poo and paper. And what goes down your sink and drains also ends up in our sewage treatment plants. Domestic cleaning products are designed to be safe to use, but fats and oils are a definite no-no. It congeals and creates blockages and in worst cases can damage pipes, allowing sewage to escape into the environment and become a danger to the public and Taswater employees tasked with fixing the problem. Check out this fatberg found in Mount Nelson. A combination of wet wipes, sanitary items, plastic, tree roots and large particles of fat. This was found early and was safely disposed of before it caused any damage to the environment. But removal of these objects costs millions of dollars every year across Tasmania. Responding with speed, accuracy and efficiency to outages, blockages and overflows is critical for Taswater so they can minimise interruptions of service to customers and keep us all safe. As well as being inconvenient, water and sewage ending up in places where it shouldn't be can have very serious consequences to our health and environment. To counter this, Taswater has an operations centre staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It plays a critical role as the front line for monitoring thousands of network assets and working with the teams on the ground to get to problems fast. So there's always someone in this room. We will monitor all three regions of south, northwest and north. If any of these alarms pop up, it's something that we need to be aware of and that we need to interrogate. So it covers a variety of systems for all the sites. Here it goes through everything from treatment plants, so water and sewer, as well as any plant shutdowns or in particular chlorine. So if it's a critical one, we will be able to see it and monitor. With rain, it does make our job a little bit interesting, especially for the field staffs. On a wet weather event, it can get quite busy. You'll probably be seeing about 300 or so plus alarms appear at any given moment. So it's a case of making sure that we don't miss anything. Making sure that we can provide as much information to the field staff as possible and making sure that we're adequately staffed here. So having maybe an extra operator or two to cover on some occasions if there is weather pending, there can be quite a lot of alarms appearing on each of the systems. So it's a, a case of prioritisation and making sure that we're on the ball to not miss anything. It's also making sure that we support that field staff crew, make sure that we provide a service to them and we're all working towards an end result. The end result means that our customers are being able to turn on their taps and drink potable water. Although Tasmania only has just over 2% of the Australian population, Tas Water controls about 38% of the country's water treatment plants. Treating water seems relatively easy. You collect it, 
filter it and disinfect it. Sounds simple, but each of these steps bring challenges, particularly in small and remote communities like the many we love here in Tasmania. Taswater implemented their 24 Glasses Regional Towns project in 2016 to have health alerts lifted in 24 towns within 24 months. These towns had ageing infrastructure and water catchments are shared with farmers, forestry, power generators and industry. The task was massive. Over the two years, they built 17 water treatment plants, installed four water transfer pipelines, cleaned and upgraded water mains, rehabilitated reticulation networks and built water storage tanks. The work included constructing treatment plants in workshops and transporting them to site as a whole built unit. The speed and innovation in the project were groundbreaking and the assets will serve their communities and customers for up to 50 years. This is an investment for many years to come. Derby, Swansea, Epping Forest, Wayatina and Gladstone are just some of the towns that benefited. And to top it all off, one of the locations won the best municipal water in the world for 2021 at the Berkeley Springs International Water Tasting Event held in the United States. That award went to the tap water at Ross Arden in the Fingal Valley. <laughs> right, you ready to start again? The world needs engineers because... Clean water and sanitation services, that eliminates a whole heap of issues in the community, health issues. Engineers are essential to society to, to meet society's needs. I mean, we do lots of things to make and solve problems for people. For instance, people just don't know where lots of things go, so you know, your sewage or your water, where does it come from? They don't really ask those questions on a day-to-day -day basis, they just assume that it's, it's done for them. Um, and that's what engineers do, we provide those uh, services and needs for society. It's certainly a, an area that's never dull, yeah. even if we sometimes seem to be. What is the coolest engineering solution you've seen in our Tasmanian water and sewage systems? I guess if you go across all of us engineers in Taz Water, we've seen a wide range of interesting things. I think one of the coolest um, historical things I've seen is the porcupine pipe um, along the pipeline track on Mount Wellington. So it's a really old pipe. When I first started my career going along there and seeing a pipe with all these pieces of hewn pine poked into it, thousands of them. Whenever there was a, a, a leak in it, they just poke another piece of hue and pine in. Hue and pine doesn't rot, so it, you know, it's there forever once they've poked that. But seeing this pipe that literally looked like a porcupine, uh, that was pretty cool. Why is it so important to be planning for the long term when upgrading and improving water and sewerage infrastructure? Oh, well, many reasons. Good question. So we need a plan for the long term so we have a vibrant future for our communities. When we build the infrastructure to, to harvest water and to convey water to where we need it, we really need to be thinking um, long term because these are very expensive and long lived assets. Maybe a pipeline won't last 80 years. We need to be confident that we have enough water to reliably put into the system and that it will also meet the needs of a population which might be growing. Trying to build in flexibility. Mm or unknown changes in the future. Definitely. And I think if we think back, I mean, we've got dams that are 150 years old. 150 years ago, everybody traveled on a horse and cart. Yep. What cool things have you done at Taz Water as an engineer that you're proud of? I think that depends on your definition of cool. Building hydraulic models is really cool. It's kind of like playing SimCity press the go button, you've got all these flows through it. All these colours change as the, as the water's running through the pipes and they're surcharging. And you can get a 3D model and rotate them. Yeah, I guess there's a, there's a bit of a theme here. Perhaps we both played too many computer games at one point. I really enjoyed building models of Hobart's demand um, and particularly looking at how it responds over summer on a, on a warm day or a rainy day when people are obviously out watering their gardens and, and being able to visualise that on a chart. Yeah, that's a, a bit nerdy, but I like that too.